We are taking a closer look at the potential link between allergies and anxiety. You wouldn't think they go together. Several studies from all over the world have found connections between the two diseases among children and adults. Doctors and specialists are still working to figure out the specific relationship, but there's hope that this could lead to better treatments, perhaps for both. Uh, for more on this now, we want to bring in Dr. Anita Ogden. She's an internal medic medicine specialist. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So what are these studies revealing? Is it, uh, you know, that um, you have really bad allergies and that leads to anxiety and, and depression? Because I know yeah. you can be miserable when you have allergies or is it the other way around that you are prone to anxiety and so you're more vulnerable to allergies? Right, so the more likely one is that you have allergies and you're more prone to anxiety, depression, and mood disorders. And you're right, we've seen it now, a very real association in both children and adults. Mm. On one level, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, in kids, we've seen skyrocketing food allergies, and you can imagine that uh, they develop sort of PTSD almost right about the allergen going through the trauma of those cascade of events an EpiPen going to the emergency room if they have those extreme reactions and even in the media they may hear about uh, children who've died from food allergies yeah. uh, and so that and even in you know social situations they may feel withdrawn they can't eat the same foods as uh, their their peers at birthday parties or at school right. that can all create a, a, a kind of anxious depressed uh, feeling in a child and Completely. lead to those mood disorder because we hear that it could be a matter of life and death I mean in some exactly. cases even if you sort of smell a uh, peanut you know right. we've heard these sort of extreme yeah. cases airborne allergens yeah and then even in adults and children we see these horrible pollen allergies and allergies are a chronic illness there is no cure they can have these vague symptoms mm. of headache malaise fatigue almost like a flu but going on for weeks for a whole season mm -hmm. so certainly that can bring somebody down into these doldrums mm -hmm. but there is a thinking that there might be a bio logic component here as well, that the cytokines, which are these immunologic mediators that are released locally within our nose when we have that stuffiness and all those symptoms, right. they can actually travel up to our brain and mess with our brain chemistry there. Um, cortisol, which is released uh, in allergies, mm -hmm. it's a stress hormone. Uh, there's some thinking that it dampens down serotonin, which is the feel-good hormone of our brains. So that may also be leading to some of these mood disorders. Uh, the big thing is for doctors to really have this on their radar yeah. so they can check in with patients and ask them how they're feeling. That is really fascinating. Yeah. I know, you know, I, I get allergies, but often for me in sort of the beginning of that time, right. I am not aware of the fact that we're getting into allergy season and I just sort of feel out of sorts. Yeah. And I'm kind of grumpy and I, I think to myself, oh, I must be extra tired. Exactly. But then when it lingers and lingers and lingers, I realize, no, I'm not tired. It's my eyes are reacting to the allergens in, in the environment, exactly. you know? And that's why I'm grumpy. Right. Um, so I'm presuming that this sort of research can help, hopefully, the idea is that it will help either with when it comes to treating allergies or perhaps treating anxiety and depression? Exactly, that's true. And so both the psychiatrists and the allergists or even the primary care physicians, pediatricians and family practitioners should have this, as I said, on their radar so they can take it to another level, yeah. you know, not just treat the allergy, but see if there's an ele another element at play here. It's same thing if you're treating somebody for anxiety. Are there allergies? Actually, a study showed that people who had allergies and mood disorder, when their allergies were treated, it got better. So that's, you know, it works. <laughs> this is fascinating. I mean, I, we, you know, we do, we have a lot of conversations about research and studies and, and sometimes you think, oh, this stuff's never going to really result in a quality of life change for the people who are yeah. suffering. Yeah. But this looks like this is There's really good research. Where we can make a difference here. Yeah. yeah. And it might be an element that's uh, sort of missing because we're so quick to see patients these days and give them the medicine that works. And But, you know, now more than ever, a lot of conditions that people are struggling with struggling with have many layers. Right. And um, it does take a bit of time to tease out what else is going on. Is there a feeling that if if somebody's suffering from anxiety and depression, that if you tackle that, you could then also see a reduction in their reaction to allergens? Uh, I don't know. I mean, possibly. Right. You know, physiologically, I don't think so. But there may be someone might then feel more proactive about taking care of themselves, and mm. that can lead to general wellness. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, there there's there's one alarming element to this, there's a study that showed that there was an increase in suicidality in pollen season. Wow. So that's a more extreme level, which suggests that this is something we should be paying attention to and yeah. actually putting more investigative research into if that that's a very real phenomenon, um, that people who are at risk, this might be a season when 
doctors should be more vigilant. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense, uh, Dr. Yeah. Anita Ogden. Thank you so much. Thank it's you so for having me. <laughs>